Well done. Thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. Hey, close your eyes, close your mouth. Father, thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for another chance to be in the house of the Lord. I thank you for every young person in this place tonight. Thank you for every person in this place that's represented. Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Hey, I need all my little kids. All my little ones. I want y'all to come up here. We're going to do the Christian hokey pokey.
you guys excited to be here tonight? Listen, I love this. I love having all of our adults, all of our students in one room. And it's refreshing to go with groups of people.
all across this room, can we lift our hands real quick? All across this room. Father, we worship you in this place. Father, we love you. We thank you for bringing us together in fellowship, God, for bringing us together in worship. And Father, my heart's cry, my, my prayer, Father, is that you would be the fire on the inside of us burning all that we are out and you burning bright God. I'll be left. in this place can we sing come be the fire
He knew who you were. He knew what you were going to be, what, who you were going to be. He knew everything about you before He formed you in your mother's womb. He knew you. So what does that mean? That means, Buggy, come here. Come here, Buggy. Step, step up here. Why don't you stand right here? Get up. my buddy, Buggy. Love this kid. Before God put these fingers on his hand, he put a spirit in Buggy. Before God put these eyes and that nose and these ears on the side of his head, God put a spirit inside of him. And God knew who Buggy was going to be. And here's what the devil tries to do. He tries to... Go ahead, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Here's what the devil tries to do. The devil tries to tell you that God didn't care about you. Your mom and dad don't care about you. Nobody cares about you. You're always in trouble. And that that's simply not the case. The case is this. is that God cared so much for you that he... He put His Spirit in you. He made you a living soul before He ever formed any of your fingers and your toes and your nose and your ears and eyes. He knew who you were going to be and what you were going to be. He's given you the vision of what you can be. Just don't let the devil tear it up and, and make you something that you're not. This, listen, I want you to understand for just a minute. When I say that you can be everything, I, I, I want you to dream about what you want to be. I want you to fulfill the dream that God has given you in your life. Don't, don't let anybody tell you that you can't be what it is that God has placed in your, in your life to be. Listen, I grew up just like you. I grew up in a little bitty house at the end of Highland Street. That's where I grew up. I didn't grow up in a nice neighborhood with a lot of money and a nice car and all that. Stuff. I didn't grow up with any of that stuff. I know exactly where you come from. Most of you come from. I, I know what it's like. My parents were wonderful parents, and they were Christian parents, and I had, a great, I had that great foundation. But the rest of my family were crazy. The straight up truth. Crazy. They were crazy. Everything they could do to do wrong, they did. Everything. So hear me. I know what it's like to come from people telling you you'll never be what God's called you to be. I know exactly what that feels like. I know what it feels like to go to Seminole High School and not have the coolest clothes and the newest shoes and, and not the coolest. I know what that's like. I know what it's like for people to look down at you because you don't have stuff. I know exactly how that feels. Because I was there. I was there. Now, I grew up in Seminole in the early 80s when oil money was flowing like crazy and people had money. You know, my mom and dad worked themselves to death at Wrangler. It was Bluebell then. And they provided a great home for us and great stuff. And we had clothes to wear and shoes to wear. I'm not saying anything about that. But I'm talking about we didn't have, what was the cool thing then? Uh, we didn't have the Levi's 501 because my mom worked at Wrangler. She wasn't she was about to buy me right, uh, Levi's because she worked for Bluebell. And so we, we didn't have the 501s. We didn't have the, that was back when, the, when Nikes first came out and had the blue swish on the side. Swish on the side. That was when Nikes first were a big thing. When uh, Jordans came out, there were the, the ugly uh, red and black ones, you know? Ugly ones from 1984. $100, $100 a pair. There was no way. We got Walmart shoes. So I know exactly what that means and how that feels. I know. So hear me for a second. Look at my nose. Please look at my nose. Give me 15 minutes. I'll, I'll turn you loose. When I speak this into your life, I want you to understand something. God gave me a word to speak into every one of your lives, and that is simply this. You will be what God's called you to be. You will do it if you will simply take the initiative to follow after God. Uh, Cody and uh, Candy and, and uh, April and Amy and uh, whoever else. Brooke, Kelsey. They're speaking into your lives and they're, and they're trying to, they're taking time away from their families to spend time with you. And this is what I expect from you. Can you look at me for just a minute? This is what I expect. I expect you to give them, give them respect. That's what I expect. I expect you to respect them. I expect you to be, uh, to be obedient to what they tell you to do. I expect you to, to love them because they, they love you. I expect you to follow the rules. I expect you not to talk when somebody else is talking. 
When church is going, listen, we'll play and we'll have a good time, but when church is going on, I expect you to listen to the Word. I expect you to listen to Cody. When Cody's uh, preaching, I expect you to listen to Amy and to April and to Kelsey and to Brooke when they're, when they're speaking and giving you a lesson from the Word of God. I expect you to listen. Why? Because they're speaking into your lives the words of life. Here's what Jesus said to the disciples. He said, the disciples said to him, that's a hard saying, Jesus, who can be saved? And Jesus said, Jesus said, listen, you guys can go too. And they said, well, where are we going to go, Jesus? You have the words of life. What does that mean, the words of life? That means that this book can not just contains truth, but it is truth. It is a blessing to you, and it's an honor for you to, to be in the house of God. But here's what I want you to expect from us. Look at me. Here's what I want you to expect from us. I want you to be treated with respect. I don't want you to be, I don't, I want you to be treated with the utmost respect. But you've got to give respect to get respect. You with me? Let me hear your heads rattle. You with me? Okay. I, I, expect you, I expect you to give respect. But I want you to be treated with respect. I want you to be treated like you are the precious gift that you are. God has given us you and your soul. He has blessed us with your soul. Now who's the youngest one in you? Colt, how are you? He's four... Is Colt the youngest? Not a little girl. What little girl is? Okay, how old is she? She's four. So it's Colt. Okay, four years old. We'll say four years old. You're three? Four. Okay, we'll say four years old. Four years old. He's probably the youngest in here. Maybe a little, if we go to the nursery, maybe younger than that. Four years old. At four years old, look at me. At four years old, God could call you to do great and mighty things at four years old. Who's the oldest student in here tonight? 19? Who's 19, Abby? At 19 years old, how old are you been? 19? At 19 years old, God can transform your life at 19 years old. He can change everything in your life at 19 years old. Because God loves you that much. He cares about you. Now, I don't know what your family's like. I don't know anything about you other than you come to church on Wednesday nights and I high five you and then I have to come preach to the adults. Okay? And so, hear me, look, look at me, look at me. Listen, listen. I just want to share this with you. Please just hear me for just a minute. I want, to, I want you to understand that when you come to this church, number one, you should feel like you're, you're loved and you belong. Number one. Number two, you should feel like Jesus loves you no matter what you've done in your life. Jesus loves you. I was talking to my cousin yesterday. And, I, and, I, and we have family members that just sabotage themselves and they do things, just do dumb things. They sabotage themselves. And, and I want you to understand this. Until you can forgive yourself for doing something stupid, you'll never go forward. Your life will always be in the same cycle that it's in right now. You've got to forgive yourself. How many know how to get saved? How do you get saved? Someone tell me. Baptism. Wrong. <laughs> How do you get saved? Brianna? Yeah. Brianna said when you, when you get saved, you pray to Jesus and Jesus to, and then he comes into your life, right? Okay. Somebody else tell me. Young man in the back. Yes, uh, God. Ask God. How you get saved? Sierra, where's Sierra? Sierra. How you get saved? Ask God to your heart. Okay. Ask God for forgiveness. Brianna. That's right. I love it. Yes, sir. Ask God to forgive you for your sins. Okay, listen. Hear me. Okay, listen. Jesus gave us a way to be saved. What does saved mean? That means that you're not going to hell. That means that you're now you're giving your life over to the Lord. That means that now you can have a blessed life. And so I, I preach this all the time to the adults. So let me just share it with you. I believe that God has called me to reach this city and to transform this city. You know how we're going to do that? With these four rows, of th these three rows of four. That's how we're going to do that. Where are y'all going? Okay. 
these three rows of four. You guys are going to transform this city. You guys are going to change it. Look at me. Hey, listen. Turn around. Look. You guys are going to turn. It's you guys that are going to do it. Because, listen, the adults, they've already, they've already made up their mind that they're going to serve God or they're not. And most adults already have been here in this church have given their lives to the Lord. I need you to make a decision to change this world and to change this city. How many of you guys know somebody or, or know something that has, uh, that somebody that's just, they do the wrong thing all the time. They're always in trouble. Okay? Okay. Listen. Okay, put your hands down. Listen. If you know somebody like that, and you know that there's something missing in their life. You know what that, that something is? It's Jesus is missing in their life. Because nobody has got, got, gotten to them. Hey, babe, what's your name? Courtney, I knew that. Okay, listen, listen, look at me. Look at me. Because nobody's gone to her and said, Courtney, how old are you for? You're eight? Wow. You're going to like that when you're older. When people say that. Listen. When people look at me, hey, listen. Give me, give me, I got five more minutes. You told me I could have 15, I got five minutes. Okay. Because somebody needs to come to Courtney and say, Courtney, do you know Jesus? And you say, yes, I'm going to tell her And you say, she does know Jesus. How do I know that? Are you, you know, you're asking Jesus if you're up? Yes, ma'am, there's no problem with it. So, so she says, I don't know. So we're going to do it again. Just so she'll know, okay? And you're not talking about yourself. You're not talking about yourself. And so we come to Courtney and we say, Courtney, let me just tell you what Jesus can do. Jesus can change your life. You know how to change it? He can make you a blessing. He can make you a Pray to me. 
God telling you, I need you, I want you to be saved. It's a prompting of the Spirit of God to tell you to pray. I promise you, listen, next time you feel that way, now how many said that sometimes you just want to cry, you don't know why? Okay. The next time you feel that way, I double dog dare you. I double dog dare you to start praying and say, God, please save me. Please save my soul and see if you don't feel better and see if that, something doesn't change in your life. I guarantee you, I promise you, that something will change in your life. Now you can't, the next day, this is what's going to happen the next day. The devil's going to come to you and say, that was just silly. You didn't, that nothing happened. But you know in your spirit that something changed when you prayed. You know that something changed in your life when you prayed. So whenever you feel that way again, if you go home tonight and you just feel like, I don't know why I want to cry, I'm sad, I'm mad, I'm glad, I don't, I don't know what's going on, I just feel like I'm going to cry. I promise you, if you'll pray, you'll pray and say, God, please save me. Please change me. Please come into my life and make a difference. I promise you, He will. Amen. I promise you, He will. And you can come back next week and say, Brother Jeff, you were right. Something in my life has changed. And don't let the world beat it out of you. I heard this, this said this way before. Don't let the world chew the sweet out of you and spit you out. You know how you chew bubble gum until you get all the until it's just nasty? Yep. For like five minutes now, you can chew gum for like five minutes, and now it's just nasty. Okay? So don't let the world chew all the sweet out of you and spit you out. Let God transform your life. Here's what you can expect from this church. From us as the pastor, the lead pastor of this church, let me just share something with you. This is what you can expect from us. I will pray for your lost soul and your, and your saved soul. I will pray for your soul and your family every day. I will pray that God transforms their lives and your lives every day. I will pray that God gives you strength so when nobody else is praying for you, know that Brother Jeff loves you and we're praying for you. I will pray for you. Cody will pray for you. Candy will pray for you. Uh, a Amy and April and, and Brooke and, and Kelsey, we're all going to pray together. We're gonna, listen, I don't know what has been in the past. I do know what's been in the past because I was here. But it's time we start binding together as leadership and pray and rebuke the devil from our children and get rid of all this junk that's going on in their lives. It is time that we quit letting our children be, the, the, be led to the wolves and led to the slaughter without us even acting like we give a, a rip about it and start and so we've got to start being proactive as a church to protect what God has given us. I want you to understand I'm talking to the adults behind y'all for just a second. I want you to understand something. God has blessed us with this and that in the back. Do not take it for granted. Do not take it for granted that God just does this everywhere. I will promise you tonight there is a pastor bawling his eyes out because there's no kids in his church. And he's wanting kids in his church, but he has nobody that has the vision. Nobody that has the care about it. And we actually have a care and a vision for it. I want you guys to understand that we as a church will pray for you and seek God for your life. We, I promise you that. Number two, we will start treating our kids with respect or we will not be in youth ministry. I promise you that. I promise you that. Because if we do not keep, we do not take care of our children, God is going to take them somewhere else and we're going to dry up and die and blow away and I'm not going to have it. Number three, what you can expect from us is we will feed you and we will love you, but you have got to respect those people that are doing those things. You hear me? We will love you, we will feed you, we will do whatever. And if we have coats and all that stuff in the wintertime, we'll give those out, backpacks for school. We're going to do all those things because we care about you. Fourth thing, and I'll leave you alone. Number four. Here's what you can expect from us. That we will teach you about the Word of God. Every week there should be something taught to you about Jesus and the Word of God. Every week, there should be something put into your spirit, out of our spirit. And if we don't have anything in our spirit, we need to pray until we get something in our spirit to give to our youth. Our youth. Because we are, we, you deserve that, we offer that, and I want you guys to understand, we will do those four things. Number one, we will pray for you. Number two, we'll treat you with respect. Number three, what is what? I forgot what it is. Feed them. Feed them and clothe them. Number four, we will pour the Word of God into your life. And I promise you, with those four things activated in this church, this city will be transformed by you. I want to break the cycle of your life. I want to break that, that poor mentality off of your life. I don't want you to be poor. Look at me. I don't want you to be poor anymore. 
And the way you don't be poor anymore is you live for God and you work hard. Amen. And I, I want you to follow the example of, of me and, and, and Cody and Candy and everybody else that works for you. Follow the example and li get out of the poverty cycle. You can, listen, I don't want you to, I want you to be a blessing of the Lord. I don't want God to bless you. I want God to bless everything that you lay your hand to do. But the only way you prosper is if your soul prospers. That's what God says. Amen. He'll prosper you as your soul prospers. Brother Cody, you have anything you want to say to them before I tell them? Well, I mean, I'm just letting what it says. I want Cody to come up here. Candy, I want you to come up here. Hey, hey, Amy, come on. Brooke, April, anybody over here? Huh? Okay, come on. You see these folks right here? They love you. Look at me. Hey, I got three minutes. These three people right here love you. I know they love you. And, I want, and Darren. Hey, Darren. Walkie. Isabel's in the back. They just do it. They do it because they love you. I know it's hot here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm about to. I'm about to melt down too. But Cody wants to say something to you. Thank you for listening to me. I love you very much. I think. Um, I think everybody in here is very blessed to be in the church. There's a pastor that loves them as much as he does. Um, I can't tell you how many nights I drive by um, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning and I know your pastor's in here praying for you and your pastor's in here preparing for you um, because you, your pastor wants to see God move in your life. Students, your pastor wants to see God move in your life. And I know that me and my wife have told you that, that we want to see God move in your life, but it's not just us. And it's not just Pastor Jeff. It's all of your youth leaders. It's the, it's the church. It's everybody that lifts up a prayer for you. God wants They want to see God move in your life. And I'll share um, just one more thing. Brother Jeff started talking about how your life can be different. How it can be changed. Um, about four years ago, um, I had the honor to be leading worship at church camp. And I remember very, very plainly the man that was speaking there. His name was Brother Joe Skiles. And all week he used one phrase for the entire week. Brother Jeff was there. Pastor Jeff was there. And he'll remember too. But Brother Joe Skiles preached this. He said, if I change, everything else changes. If I change, everything else changes. He preached about not waiting for your circumstance to change, but changing within the circumstance. Looking for the good. But allowing God to change you on the inside. And what God does on the inside is going to come out to the outside. And I love it that Brother Jeff brought that up. If you want to see your life change, allow God to change it. That's all I have. Thank you so much, students. You guys were awesome tonight. It's because, it's because Pastor Jeff's mean, though, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's not mean. He's just intimidating. I appreciate you guys. You students, thank you so much. All right. Well, I give you kudos, and then you just go crazy. What's going on? I appreciate you. Hey, in this church, we take up an offering. This offering goes to buys that food that you guys ate tonight. Amen. So, Brother Mark, come on. We're going to take up an offering. Yes, sir. And hey, we're taking it off. You got to bow your head. Close your eyes. Close your mouth. Ready? Father, I thank you for each and every student in this place today. 
I thank you for them. I ask that you bless this offering today, God, that we can be a blessing. God, bless them to everything that we do. Bless this money and everything that we do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say it. God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Father, as we're dismissed from this place, but never from your presence, I ask that you bless them today. Bless them as they go to school tomorrow. Keep them safe out of harm's way. And Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody in the back, please. Yes.